basic motivation uh, was uh, to address the Arctic Ocean in a multidisciplinary manner. Uh, and that is, uh, strangely enough, uh, very much missing in the literature. And I would like to communicate to the general public, the politicians and the scientists, that we have to work together to achieve a better understanding on the processes and the role of the Arctic Ocean. The specific value of that book it is that it is not sectorial. It does not look at certain regions of the Arctic. It looks at the entire Arctic and it does not focus upon certain uh, aspects of science, uh, which uh, there are many books about. It wants to look at the Arctic uh, in its complexity, multidisciplinary, and uh, so the um, theoretical background for them is that we have a systemic approach. We would like to see the system as such. The book uh, tries to uh, address all possible aspects of uh, challenges and problems and science fields or political fields in the Arctic Ocean. And it does so because uh, I am convinced and many are convinced but all those aspects have to be seen together in concert. Now, we have uh, uh, very much of our knowledge is, uh, uh, is, uh, is weak in various fields, so every field has to continue to study and fill the gaps in knowledge. But at the same time, we have also to open our eyes to see how we can do this in context with the other areas. And we have not really started with that. That book, the book is probably the first, first start uh, to get the process uh, going. And it's very much up to the reader to read between the chapters and between the lines or what kind of uh, projects or pr procedures we can have in the future. And we need the uh, connection between the fields uh, to uh, come to what I call a wise uh, knowledge-based ecosystem and resource management. Uh, because uh, only by uh, looking at the various fields, the socio-economic implications, maybe even the political ones, the various scientific ones, we can uh, provide humanity with the tools and the base that they need uh, to cope with the changes Uh, the, uh, there is only one globe, one w big world, and uh, the Arctic Ocean, as any other part, plays a role uh, in that one world. And then the question is, how much impact has uh, the Arctic Ocean then on the rest of the world? And the Arctic Ocean has a significant impact on the world and how the world is functioning. And that is because the uh, climate change, uh, the variability of the climate change is several times bigger than for the rest of the world. So there's nowhere that climate change has had so many consequences. And then the change in the Arctic has implications on the world. And for that I could mention climate variability, weather change, changes in productivity, um, changes in f fisheries, sea level rise, all those things which are, have global uh, implications, they are all impacted by the Arctic Ocean. So whether the Arctic Ocean, where to is the Arctic Ocean developing, is then the question, how much will the world be impacted by these changes? The basic uh, changes in the Arctic Oceans are pretty simple. The ice melts, 
the sea ice gets thinner or disappears and the uh, big uh, Greenlandic ice cap is melting. So these are the major changes uh, and then they have uh, implications for, for us. The melting of the, the, ice, uh, the Greenland ice cap results in sea, uh, gives rise to sea level rise. That produces hundred, hundred millions, a couple of hundred millions uh, of uh, refugees, climate refugees, which the world has to handle. Uh, when we have uh, dry weather, wet weather, too warm, too cold, down to uh, the Mediterranean, all that is produced by the open water space of the Arctic Ocean. Uh, if we see uh, f changes in fisheries, uh, distribution of fish and changes in biodiversity oh, on the northern hemisphere, also that is uh, very strongly impacted by the Arctic Ocean. So it's place, uh, it is a remote area, few people living there, but it has an impact on everybody living in the northern hemisphere. Yeah, the uh, socio-economic uh, challenges are, of course, because uh, there is easier access to the Arctic. That means transportation. Basically, it means access to uh, resources which a hungry world wants to have. That means mining, oil and gas, tourism, transportation, and uh, connected to that pollution. So the socio-economic uh, uh, impact of the changing climate in the Arctic is imminent. Uh, geopolitically, um, there are of course challenges there, uh, which are connected to very much to the how you interpret the law of the sea, which regulates the borders and the way uh, resources can can be used. And uh, there are um, uh, challenges with transportation routes. Uh, there are challenges with how to define the borders in the Arctic Ocean. And, uh, and they are, there are international dis disputes there, but there are also national disputes. Every coastal Arctic state around the Arctic Ocean uh, has disputes about mining, oil and gas, fisheries, etc. That is happening already and uh, uh, the tension or the challenges to solve that are, uh, are, are increasing. But one has also to add that the Arctic Ocean is a very peaceful ocean. So the rules how that should be done are on the table and all the partners so far have followed the rules. The ice will never leave the Arctic. The Arctic will always be ice covered. But the ice is thinner and the ice in the central Arctic Ocean might disappear in late summer. And that is inevitable and will take place sooner or later. I don't think that we are able to manage that transformation. Uh, the ice in the Arctic Ocean is gone, so to say, if, for a, a, a long time because that is the consequences of what we have been doing in emission, emitting to the atmosphere over the last 100, 150 years. So we cannot put that back. We can slow down, uh, but uh, we cannot uh, change that, uh, that consequence. We have to face uh, what we have been doing in previous times and, and uh, live with that and ask ourselves if it should go continue like that, so that it has also consequences for other regions. All the indigenous populations which uh, have um, um, uh, use hunting, uh, subsistence hunting, as their uh, way of life, they have been already impacted uh, by, uh, by
by, by the changes. And in the future, they will be more impacted by that. They have probably to change their way of life uh, and, um, and they have to change their nutrition, which then has consequences on their culture and their attitude uh, to, uh, uh, to nature. But there are also a lot of indigenous peoples which uh, um, don't live by that and they are as impacted as all the other ones. So 90% of the people in the Arctic are not indigenous and they are subjected to the type of climate changes which we are uh, talking about. But for those living by subsistence hunting, they are of course uh, uh, strongly impacted. Yes, that uh, is a, a difficult question uh, because it implies a certain view on sustainability. Um, uh, the any system uh, has usually a balance point in which it is sustainable. So the old Arctic was sustainable and the new Arctic will be sustainable. Uh, the old Arctic is gone. The new Arctic or the different types of Arctic which are developing, they will find their equilibrium points and then those will be uh, sustainable inside ranges. So sustainability is not connected to one state which is disappearing. Sustainability is a process which is, um, is part of every type of system which you would like to use. So you use, uh, you, um, you look for the ecosystem services of a system and then you ask, how can I manage that in a sustainable manner inside ranges? We cannot say it's a problem that things have changed. They have changed. So we have to face how things are to do now. And then we have to handle in the best possible way how the things are. We cannot complain about something which was done by our activities 100 years ago. We cannot go into the future by looking back and complaining. We have to f do whatever we do. And every fisherman in North Norway, everybody in Northern Canada or Greenland, they have to do, they have to live the way it is and do the best out of that. And that's what they're doing. They're very good in adapting. So people adapt to the changes. So the challenges are there but there are also the solutions.